If you're like me, you have questions. I know top of the list, question number one, question numero uno, is can a dumbbell surf? And question number two is why the heck does Ryan have a dumbbell in the first place? Well, that question is fairly easy to answer. So let's get into that first. And then I'm gonna demonstrate the functionality of this amplifier, and then we'll find out if it surfs or not. It does, it totally does. So anyways, why the heck do I have a dumbbell? The easy answer is I don't. <laughs> but I do have a steel string singer made by Grand, not made by Dumble, by Grand. Grand is a Chinese company that is making these reproductions, recreations, copies, clones, whatever word you want to use to describe this situation. That's what they're doing. And it was very, very, very generously gifted to me by friend of the show, Bendy, the guy behind the Wangs USA website and shop where if you want to buy Wang's amps, you go over there. So apparently Grand, the company, is friends with Wang's. They're not the same company. They're not building for each other, but they're like buddies. We see that in American building circles, like brands that are buddies with each other. And so Bendy started talking to Grand and it sounds like he's making moves to carry these things and sell them in the States. So he wanted to send one to me, obviously, he wanted to see me film it. I wanted to spend time with it. I want to explore a Dumble style amplifier. I've always explored these little pedals that come in, like affordable board pedals that claim to be Dumble style pedals, or even small builder pedals or boutique pedals that claim to be Dumble style pedals. I've always had this big question like, what does that even mean? Who's even gotten to have hands on experience with a Dumble style amplifier enough to? generate a pedal that produces dumbbell style tones. And from what I understand about dumbbell amps in the first place is that they're all kind of one-offs. They're all custom made amps by Dumble for whatever client he was talking to. So how do you make a definitive dumbbell style sound? Well, hopefully this thing will kind of give me a frame of reference. Hopefully it'll give me a, a, a base mark to judge things by. I have spent time with it. This is not an unboxing. And I will say, this is, a, this is an impressive amplifier. This, and it's a clean, clean, clean machine. It does have some dirt, but this is a specialist in crafting and generating iconic and beautiful and dirty and thick and twangy and bright and brittle clean guitar sounds. It really is a clean amp builder. It is not one sound. It is dozens and dozens and dozens of sounds with an incredible amount of control. It is honestly like the top tone shaping amp as far as clean channels go that I've ever experienced. It's pretty wild. And I will say that obviously I've never had personal experience. As far as I'm aware, I've never been in the same zip code as an actual Dumble. So maybe it doesn't even sound the same at all. And I'm definitely not using speakers that were picked by Dumble or represent the speakers that Dumble would use. But I can say that I am very impressed with this amplifier. So anyways, let's get into it. I could, I could honestly sit here and just flap my gums for like an hour just talking about the experience I've been having with this amp, but it would be much better to play with it and show it off. A little bit about my recording rig. I've got a pair of Cascade Fathead ribbon mics down in front of the speakers, the same way I mic up the Princetons. Uh, this speaker cab is a unique situation. It is just about the ugliest worst looking speaker cab you could imagine. It's an old crate 2x12 amplifier that Steve gutted and turned into a speaker cab probably 20 something years ago. I recently replaced the speakers in it because it had the original crate speakers and a big hole had torn in one of them. And I wanted to get louder and more efficient and just have better sound in general. So I have a really unique mix of speakers in here. I've got this uh, uh, Jensen neodymium thing that I picked up from Toman. I'll try to find a link for that down in the description. And I've got an eminent swamp thing in there. So 
it's half light and half very thick and heavy. And when I combine those two speakers in post, I'm hoping to get a nice balance that represents what I was hearing in room. I've been playing around with this amp for a couple of days now, and it sounds fantastic to me through these speakers. It's obviously gonna sound different through any different set of speakers. This is a very unique set right here. I'll say that. So anyways, is it warmed up? All right, let's get started. I need to show you every single control that's on this amplifier because it just never stops. It's just piles and piles of tone shaping controls on this amplifier. It is honestly kind of ridiculous. On the face of it, we've got a FET gain knob. This introduces some either BiFET or MOSFET or Boba FET overdrive into the signal, some saturation, some dirt, some grit. Uh, then you've got your pre-volume. That also introduces dirt and grit and saturation. There's a lot of redundancy here. <laughs> so if you dime these two and turn down the master control, it's not a clean amplifier anymore. It's not a heavy gain amplifier, and it's not even a mid gain amplifier, but it gives you this saturated kind of gritty crunch, which is a lot of fun to mess around with. Then you've got three switches here. Bright, deep, a selection in between rock or jazz. That's all this amp does. Not blues, not ska, not metal, just rock and jazz. There's no surf on there, but I think rock and jazz are both close enough. So it could go back and forth. It could be, you know, surf lands under rock. It also lands under jazz in certain ways. I think both of those settings are appropriate. Then you've got your standard three band EQ, treble, middle, and bass. Normal stuff for an amplifier, right? And then you've got a high and low filter control. What the heck is going on there? This is like a powerhouse of tone shaping. It's not a knob. Well, it is a knob, but it's not a rotor. It's, 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 it's not a pot. It's a switch. It is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven position switch to give you different filtering options for your high frequencies. And then again, for your low frequencies. Then you've got a two knob reverb, a reverb with a send and a return. This has a long two spring reverb in it. I think that was the specs on it, but this is very interesting because the send is basically your normal control that you would find on any amplifier. But then the return gives you the ability to dial it back. Like a reverb, when you turn it up, it changes its character as it turns up. Like it gets drippier when you turn it all the way up, it gets more mellow as you turn it down. Like say you wanna go like full saturation on a normal reverb, but you still wanna pull it back and have it be a little bit behind your playing. You can use the return to do that. Then of course, the master control, and of course a control that no tone tweaking amp would be complete without a presence control at the very end. And that's not the end of it. There's also a switch on the back. I took a photo of it earlier because I can't remember what it says exactly or what it even means. L-N-F-B. There is a three position switch right back here. In the down position, it's brighter, it's thinner, it's flatter sounding. And as you go up, to the top position, it's like this low mid boost. It's like this fattener. I mean, there's already a like a deep switch here that fattens things up. <laughs> so there's another switch back here. Like I said, there's a lot of redundancy here. Gain control, gain control, tone controls, tone controls, tone control, tone controls, tone control back here. And it has an effects loop. I know you're screaming at your screens right now, begging me to just start playing the thing and showing it off. So I'm, I'm gonna do that. There's other things that I need to say, important things that I'm going to say. I'm gonna tell a little story about how an hour out of the box, it blew its tubes and I needed to get it retubed. So stick around. If you're, if you're window shopping for these, that is important information and you wanna stick around for that. But let's start playing around with it. I don't, need, I don't even know where to start with this thing. Like, <laughs> it, is, it is a clean, sound builder. Like you could, you could make so many different clean sounds with this amplifier. So where do I start off with it? Where, where are we right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's mess
mess around with these switches first. And then we'll go through the EQ and then we'll circle back to the FET gain and the volume. <laughs> All right, bright switch, what happens? It gets bright. Turn that off. Deep switch, what happens? It gets deep. Back to the deep switch. Try that on the neck pickup. Take the deep switch off. Put the bright switch back on. A little extra hair for that bright switch on. By the way, right now I have the FET and the pre-volume up to noon, so there is a bit of saturation going on there. Let's put them both together, bright and deep. Both off. All right, on to the jazz slash rock switch. I've been in the jazz position, which is quieter, flatter, not as boomy as the rock setting. Back to the middle position. I'm gonna surf, don't worry, we're gonna get to it. It seems like every control on this amplifier is a decision in between twangy and creamy. Do you want to sound twangier or do you want to sound fatter and creamier? Do you want to sound bright and brittle? Do you want to sound dark and mellow? And you balance out all these different controls and all these different parts to come up with this recipe, this tonal recipe. And after a lot of reflection and spending time with this amplifier, a conclusion that I've come to is that the reason why, why Dumble style amplifiers are associated so closely with extremely talented, like top tier, top shelf players, top shelf tone connoisseurs, is not because these amps just sound good when you flick on the power switch. It's because they give you so much control. The Dumble style loadout, like the steel string singer style loadout, it enables someone who has a very talented ear and a very talented perspective on guitar tone to come up with some incredible sounds. And then, you know, a lay person can easily get themselves in trouble and make sounds that are too dark or too brittle, too bright, too gritty, not gritty enough. It is an amp that requires some talent and some skill and some intuition from the user. All right, moving on. Really basic, three band EQ here. If you used any amp in your life, you know how it works. Bass knob, all the way up, all the way down. I like it right about there. Middle, you can boost it. You can scoop it. Right about one o'clock. Treble, boost it. Noon, all the way off. And it's dark. It's jazz. 
jazzy. All right, put that back to a normal setting. <laughs> I love this guitar, by the way. I'm using my uh, Fender American Vintage 2 Jazz Master. It has some issues out of the box, but I've remedied them and I like playing a lot. I'm gonna put a new pickup in this soon. I'm gonna put this, uh, this humbucker from Alameda Guitars in there, in the bridge, so I can use this in more demos. So keep a lookout for that. All right, on to the filter section now. This is important stuff. And this, I'm gonna do this all again when I've got it dialed in to have some grit on it. So the high, and then I'm really gonna show this off when I turn on my uh, external surf, uh, surf reverb here. But the high, that click, not drippy. This click, that's where the drippy starts. I'm assuming that all the way to the right is just wide open. But as you click back, it starts to darken up. Hear that? That's really where the line is. I like it right about there. But then we click it back. Now this is really important if you're gonna run drives into this because in my experience so far, on the brighter side of the high filter, it's really like brittle and harsh sounding, which might be what you want, but then you click it back to the left of noon and it starts getting creamy. It starts filtering the drives in a more traditional kind of like fattening sort of way. But again, we'll come back to that when we're making gritty sounds. Here is the low filter. So all the way open, all the way over there. Start pulling it back. Starting to get brighter as you pull it back. See what I mean? You're making decisions in between twangy and creamy. of like this vocal, nasal, like scooped sort of sound to it. And with all the other tonal controls, like you could have it be a really nasal sound from the filter section, but then boost your bass, put on the deep switch, turn up the fattening switch back here, all that sorts of stuff and balance it out and come up with these like really specific unique tones. Let's go full opposites, the low filter all the way down and the high filter all the way up. I haven't tried this yet, so let's see what happens. I was expecting it to be brighter. It actually has more mid character to it. That's more nasal right there. Interesting. There's so much to learn. Now let's go all the way fat. Yeah. Warm and creamy. Put it back where I like it. Now the reverb. Should I go straight to the reverb or should I mess around with the presence? Let's do the tonal controls first and then we'll get into the reverb. So presence, 
It's a normal presence knob. Left to be darker. Right to be brighter. Because of course, every single knob has to be a decision in between twangy and creamy. Put that back where I like it. And now the switch on the back, I've had it in the up position, which is the fatter sounding setting. Put it all the way down to the bottom. Quieter, it's brighter, it's not as full. Middle position. Top position. Back to the bottom again. Top position. It's just fuller on the top position, but I could see being in a band situation and just being like, ah, oh, I'm just a little bit too muddy. I'm just fighting with the bass too much, or I'm fighting with the rhythm guitar or the keys or something. I just need to go brighter. You've got a quick and easy little thing right there to just suck out some low mids and stuff like that. And I have a feeling like, when I've spent real time with this, using it in band scenarios and recording scenarios and things like that, it's gonna become intuitive. Like, ah, it's just that weird little band right there. I know how to fix that here on the filter or oh, on this thing or the presence. Like every little bit is gonna affect a different segment of the tone in a different way. Like, ah, there's just a little bit too much grit on the high mid. So I'll do something versus another thing to control the grit on the low mids. Like that's what I'm talking about. This is, a dream amp for the clean amp tone tweakers out there. You want a clean signal and you want to get so specific and just build your own sound. This dial amp is where it's at. It is honestly ridiculous. All right, let's get into the drive sounds now. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm here. I'll show off the range of the FET gain. down is all the way off got more jangle with the fet all the way up if you want to bypass the fet there is another plug right here the ndr or N-O-R, it's N-O-R. It's this weird like calculator font that Dumble used. I thought that was a D, it's an O for normal. N-O-R is normal. So if you wanna bypass the FET, you plug into that. I think the FET just, it, it boosts the compression, it boosts that jangle. You get that pop. And it's gonna push it into drive as I turn up that pre-volume as well. All right, the pre-volume now. Start with it all the way down because of course. switch guitars for this section because you guys need to hear a humbucker, right? We'll come back to the Jazz Master when it's surfing time. Oh, it's got crunch. It's got some grit to it. I just realized I never showed off the reverb. We'll come back to that when we get into the surf stuff. I 
I think that's the sound that a lot of dumbbell style pedals are trying to capture, that thick, fat grit. <laughs> First, with the bright switch. Not as big of a difference with that gain crank. Let's try the switch in the back here. It's in the up position now. All the way down. In the middle position. In the up position. Let's try it with a single coil. So with the switch in the back all the way down to the bright and thinner sound and the bright switch up, then we start to hear a significant difference. Right switch off, switch in the back all the way up. Bright up, switch down. Yeah, you get a tighter, brighter signal with both of those engaged. Maybe you want to tame some flub or something like that when you're in a gritty setting. Let's leave the bright off and that switch up in the back. Now the deep switch. Let's try the deep and the bright. And with the switch in the back all the way down. They are more subtle settings with the gain up, aren't they? All right, now rock versus jazz. I've got the switch in the back all the way down, the bright and the deep disengaged. We've been on the jazz setting. Here is the rock setting. Back to jazz. Back to rock. More growl, more like, kind of like claws. You got more growl and more claws. It's more of a tiger on the rock setting. Or maybe a bear. Back to jazz. Rock. It's got that extra grit to it. Do I really need to go through the full three band EQ? Here, I'll scoop the mids. Boost the mids. Pull them back where I like them. Boost the treble. 
Suck the treble out. Boost the bass. Remove the bass. And then put it all back where I like it. Now the filters. Here we go. All the way to the right on the high filter. got a rumble to it now. I want to try stacking the bright into that. It's really deep and dark and creamy, but I want to try to get some like some the bright nasty edge back to it. Should I put it in the back switch. Oh, it's been in the down position. Now we'll try it in the up position. with the deep. Oh, well, that thuds now. Put it back where I like it in the middle. Now the low filter will start all the way to the right. all the way to the left it gets almost this like chimey sort of British sound to it. Try it on the single. All right not bad let's work our way back through that again. For distorted tones, I like the low filter right about there. We'll check out the range of the presence now. So before we cycle back to getting clean again and doing the surf stuff, I want to try to get as bright as possible and then get as dark as possible. And gritty. All right, now we'll get as deep and dark as possible. Mm -hmm. 
dark it's, it's not flubbing though which is interesting i'm sure if i turned it up it would flub these speakers out i've got the master down at like like two-thirds of the first notch here i don't know if it goes to 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever let's count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven it goes to eleven because of course it does reset what we're doing and do the surf stuff. Well, I got to show off the reverb too, don't I? I've had a little splash of reverb on there the whole time. It's just below the first notch, but let's dime it all the way to see what kind of splash we get out of this reverb. A nice splash to it but it's not a drippy surf reverb in full character and i don't expect it to be it's an in amp style reverb it's not doing the drippy cartoonishly saturated thing that an outboard spring reverb unit is known for doing because that's not what it is it's an in amp reverb it's got a really nice long lush trail on it but it's a it's a sort of reverb where i'm going to keep it pulled back pretty decently. It's going to be more to just add a physical space, a physical dimension to let things ring out and fill out a little bit better. I'm not seeing myself using this reverb as an always on like standalone surf style reverb, but it is there. It does sound pretty dang great for an amp style reverb. <laughs> have a little splash but i think of it more as an ambient style reverb than a drippy style reverb let's try pulling back the send here and then reversely we'll crank the send and turn down the return Do that again. Then crank them both. Send up, return up. event the clickbait the reason you came here i'm going to turn those reverbs both all the way down because we're going to dial in some surf tones and i'm going to use my surfy bear outboard spring reverb unit i've been rolling a camera on this entire time 
Oh, and my other camera went out. I'm gonna put a new battery in that. Yeah, I've, I've barely spent any time dialing this in for a surf sound. But this plus the surfy bear, that that's a surf rig right there. It sounds fantastic. It sounds like a really hot twin reverb, like a twin reverb that's, that's somehow been brought up approaching the edge of breakup, not at the edge of breakup, but it's got that little bit of sizzle. It's got that little bit of hair on the edges is taking that surfy bear so well. It just sounds so good. <laughs> trim in there. with a little bit of drive from my 5050 here. It is a double-sided DOD 250. Someday we'll make more of these and sell them. So this is basically my always on sound for my surf band Dinosaur Ghost.
sounds great. Let's turn off this extra stuff here. We're just gonna use the Surfy Bear and I'll dial around a couple different sounds. <laughs> bright spaghetti western sound. We've already got the bright on. We'll take the deep off. Put that back switch in the down position. I mean, we're most of the way there now. If you want... Well, let's explore that high filter, I was saying that on one setting, it works great with the drip, with the next setting, not so much. So we're on the setting right now that works great with the drip. And the further you go to the right, the more drip you get. Then we go backwards. Right there. That's right before the drip starts getting throttled. Which is interesting to me. That's the decision between twangy and creamy. It's right there. That notch or that notch. there is it's like a different amp just going across that high filter dial in something a little bit smoother and creamier now. Let's try stacking the amps reverb in the mix as well. Let's really space it out. much though, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to try hitting that FET gain a little bit stiffer. It can be 
bright and nasal spaghetti western, and then you, you flick a few switches, you turn a few knobs. This has this beautiful, deep low end to it. Plenty of grit there right now. That surfy bear is hitting that and really getting juiced by that game. It's a bit much. Now, Surfy Bear wants it to be clean. Been having a ton of fun with this thing. I, I've been sitting around in the garage here playing with it for a couple days. Uh, I need to tell a story about the tubes because this is important. And I'll, I'll turn it off for the time being because the rest of this is just going to be talking. I was warned by Bendy, the guy who gifted this to me. This is not a paid demo, by the way. I am technically paid because he gave me the amplifier, but this isn't your standard Ryan's been hired to do a demo. It's more like a, like a friend on friend kind of transaction thing going on here. But he warned me that when he got his, the tubes blew in the first hour. And so I tried to film an unboxing. I was like, we'll see, maybe he just got faulty tubes or whatever. And he's like, no, 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 listen, like the tubes that these ship with are just the cheapest of the cheap Chinese tubes. They're gonna blow on you. And then they did. I was filming my unboxing. I got about an hour in and it, just and it was gone. So I texted him and he's like, take it to a repair shop, have them retube it. I'll pay for it. And he did. So thank you, Bendy, for taking care of that. I'll show you the tubes that they came with. I'm not sure. This might be the one that burnt out. P.S. Vein. P.S. Vane, maybe is how it's pronounced. Hi-Fi Vacuum Tube 5881. So if you're shopping for one of these, when you contact them, if you're talking to them, tell them to put something else in. Bendy says that he's in contact with the factory and he's telling them not to use these tubes anymore. I had these replaced with JJ's. I've played with it probably good four, five, six hours since getting it retubed and biased and all that stuff and have had zero issues whatsoever. It sounds great. It sounds full. It sounds warm. I've had no hint that anything is going on. Something that was kind of fun about that is because I took it to a repair shop, the guys at the repair shop had never seen this before. They're like, oh, that's an interesting double clone. It's, it's purple. They were really in love with the fact that it's purple. And, you know, obviously I love that it's purple too. <laughs> this is suede, by the way. It is wrapped in purple suede. It smells like a shoe store. It When I first unboxed it, it was giving me like flashbacks to buying my first pair of Airwalks from a skate shop when I was like, 12 or 13 or something like that. Uh, but yeah, the repair shop got to take a look inside the guts of this thing. And I asked them when I picked it up, like, what do you think? And they're like, oh man, it's, it's really well built. It's like really impressive what's going on there. I'll put a screenshot of uh, the guts on these things. It's all hand wired. It's all old school construction. It's not made by a computer or anything like that. Someone's hand making these things in China. They're just using the cheapest of the cheap tubes for some reason. <laughs> So if you do get one of these, check to see if it's got the PS vein tubes in there and expect them to blow. They happened to Bendy, it happened to me. I have a feeling it will happen to everyone who gets these PS Vane 
tubes. Get yourself some JJ's or something else. Take it to a tech to get rebiased because those power tubes do need to get biased. And I don't have the skill to do it. Maybe you do, but I do not. So anyways, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with this thing. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to dial it in. It is a clean tone building amplifier. It is highly dependent on you using your ears and your mind and your skills and your experience to dial in the sounds that you want. And I just barely scratched the surface. I was just twisting knobs, showing you what I know. And I left, left a lot out. There's a lot you can do with this. There's a lot of possibilities. It's not just to turn it on and, oh, there's the dumbbell sound. You have to work for it. You have to want it. You have to want a specific sound and figure out how to get it. And there's plenty of controls here to do this. I will say that this is the heaviest <laughs> amp in my life right now. I weighed it the other day and it's like 60 pounds. Every time I pick it up, I go, ooh, I make that sound. I'm not joking. I go, ooh, you know that sound? It doesn't come from your mouth. It doesn't come from your vocal cords. It comes from your back. <laughs> I'd love to gig with this thing. And I know I eventually will with my surf band. I don't know how much of a habit I'll make out of gigging with this thing. I, I love the tones of it. I want to experiment with it in a live scenario. I want to experiment with a band. Uh, but the, the weight issue, I'm older now. I'm middle-aged. <laughs> I don't know if my back can handle that. Ooh. So mostly I just, my biggest problem right now is where am I going to put it? I need to figure out how I'm going to arrange it back here. You know, I'm going to have a purple suede wrapped amplifier on set as much as possible because it's a looker, even if I'm not using it because the two Princeton's are just like the soul of this channel in so many ways. Even if I'm not using it, I want to see it. I want to see that this big purple Barney dinosaur amp on screen when I'm editing. So what do you guys think? These ain't cheap. This isn't throw around money. They're, they're north of two grand. I'll have a link down below. I forget the exact price, but I, 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 I want to say like 2,300 or something like that. And it's just the head. And that's not unusual for heads these days, but it certainly is a heck of a lot cheaper than the real thing, right? I didn't have to mortgage my house. I didn't have to sell any kidneys. I didn't have to sell my kidneys, my wife's kidneys, my kids' kidneys. Everyone still has their kidneys over here and I've got this amplifier. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not a dumbbell expert. I don't know how this compares to the real thing. I don't know if this was cloned directly from a dumbbell or if it was a copy of a copy that was a copy that someone whispered the plans into someone's ear in a dark CD club somewhere, like Indiana Jones is involved somehow or something like that. It might be an incredibly accurate Dumble clone. It might be way off. Either way, I'm having a blast with it. And I think it sounds great. And I'm glad that I have it. So thank you, Bendy. Thank you for everyone who made it to the end of the video here. It surfs, clearly it surfs. We knew at the beginning it was gonna surf. Asking the question indicates that the answer is yes, right? It totally surfs. It's, it's like a really super tweakable, like twin reverb in a way. It's loud, it's bright, it can be nasal, it can be dark, it can be gritty, it can be just clinically clean. Ah, uh, there's so many different things it can be. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude, nasty comment, support us on Patreon. If you have any suggestions for other things I should do with this amplifier, make sure you tell me down in the comments. And other than that, Stay grounded. Bye, everybody.